Hello, today we're going to have a look at the Black Square Analog Caravan in Microsoft Flight Simulator and we're going to fly an instrument route with it. So just to have a, you know, play with some of the instruments in the cockpit, see how they work and to actually, you know, make use of them properly rather than just mess around, you know, seeing if things work, we'll actually fly a route. So if we go and have a look at Little Nav Map, you can see we are at Wickham Air Park in Buckinghamshire. And I've got a, quite a strange route written in here because we're going to have a play with the, the VOR radios or the nav radios, I should say. Um, we're going to fly out of Wickham Air Park for a few miles and then we're going to turn right onto a radial towards the Daventry VOR. And while we are flying towards the Daventry VOR, we're going to pick up a radial from the, now I've forgotten the name of this one, the Bovingdon VOR to fly towards Oxford and then when we cross the ILS beam Oxford we will turn in and land at Kidlington. So we're, we're using the VORs nearby but we're not flying directly to them so we're going to be using them in concert with each other. Just a bit of an academic exercise really. Okay, so let's go and get inside the plane. Let's just check that isn't going to move our view. No, that's fine. So we'll get that out of the way. We don't really need this in the way either. Okay, so first things first, let's go and get inside the aeroplane. Just make sure all the throws are correct. We have a throttle throw, we have a mixture, we have rudder pedals are squeaking. Let's have a look outside. Yep, and we've got ailerons, elevators, and outside you can see them moving around as well. All good. Okay, let's get this thing powered up then, and then we'll have a look at some of the instruments. So, first things first, battery on. Fuel boost to norm. We don't need ignition. Avionics to on. Up overhead, we're going to switch the fuel tanks to on. In the cold dark state this hasn't got the master fuel valve off so it's already on, we don't need to worry about that. So what we can do is go and start the engine and you'll see this will start spinning up in a few moments. Once we've got the engine up and running we'll have a look at programming the the various frequencies on the instruments around the cockpit. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is introduce some fuel. And I'm going to do that via my joystick as well, so I don't make a mistake. We're also going to move the propeller RPM forwards. We can turn the starter off at this point. We can reset the generator, which makes the light go out. Okay, and then we can push the mixture all the way forwards. And that makes the auxiliary fuel pump switch off. Essentially the airplane is now up and running. So we're going to waste some fuel sitting here while I have a look at some of the instrumentation. So you've got two basic sets of instruments if you have the GTN 750. We could do this without it. So if we wanted to do that we could go over here to this little switch here and we could switch this to the, the basic set that you might normally see in Flight Simulator. I think it's actually quite nice to see something a little bit different and we see two different ways of doing a job which is quite interesting in its own right. So to change the frequency of the nav radio for nav 1 you do it on the GTN 750 up here and then we'll use the GNS 430 to do nav 2. Okay so nav 1, so let's say we're going to use this um, Daventry VOR station, which is 11640. Okay. So if we go and click on standby, because this is a touch screen, 
six four zero. Then we press transfer and that makes it the active frequency. And we should well we may have to take off before it will actually work. Let's just go and check what the range is of the Daventry VOR. And it's 190 miles. So I think as soon as we get in the air we'll be able to see it. So we are going to want to do the 349 degree route into it. So we are going to, oh, before we do that, yeah this is on v lock down here which is good. So before we do that we need to change the the omni bearing selector to be the angle we want to fly into it which is 349 degrees. So here's the omni bearing selector so you've got 349 is about there by the look of it. So but that's not the direction we're going to take off we're actually going to follow our runway direction which will be 244 degrees on the climb out. So we'll get the bearing here or sorry the heading for 244 degrees. So we're just going to spin this round. We can hold the mouse down to do this. So it's going to be there or thereabouts. So we will be using heading mode when we take off on the autopilot. We'll be doing m most of this on the autopilot, it has to be said. So again, most of the reason for doing that is just you know, to have the excuse to play with the instruments and see how they work. So we're going to tune Nav2 in but at the same um, same time to 11375, the Bovingdon VOR. So, was it 11375? So we can come down here, this is Nav 2, so we press, press the knob in and it switches from doing the COM radio frequency to the NAV radio frequency. We want 113.75, or 113 decimal 75. So, as the knob is the integers and inner knob is the decimals so there we go 11375 and we have to click the button to transfer it from being the standby to the active frequency which we've just done and you can see the nav 2 instrument here has just moved so it's already switched on so obviously we can see it we've got a signal and the direction we will want to be flying from there is 297 degrees from Bovingdon, which will take us along that line. So we say 297 degrees on the Omni Bearing Selector on Nav 2. So it's going to be about there. Okay. So we're not going to worry too much about the symbology just yet, about what any of it means. So we're also going to press D to calibrate the compass if we need to, press B to calibrate the Altitude, we don't need to. Okay, so we may as well go and get in the air. We've got the engine running. We need to put some lights on. So we'll go and switch on our strobe, nav, and beacon lights. I know I shouldn't be putting the strobe on until I get on the runway before anybody hangs me out to dry about it. We're going to turn on the anti smoking and the seatbelt lights, or no smoking, I should say, not anti smoking. We can turn on the pitot heat. And I think we're just about ready to go. Just checking around some of the switches, looking, just checking lights around the cabin. Everything looks pretty good. Okay, so we are going to get on our way. So, parking brake off, flaps to, uh, flaps to take off position, increase the engine gently, lift off view up to look out. And we're going to take off runway 24, which is just along the taxiway here at Wickham Air Park, or Booker Airfield, as it's also known. <laughs> There's hardly any wind. You can see on the windsock over there it's hanging down. Okay, just before we get going, let's go and have a look at the autopilot and set an altitude. So we're going to go for 2,000 feet today. 
We're doing this deliberately, so we fly into the ILS at Oxford at 2,000 feet. So we'll climb out to 2,000, and that'll be jobs, you know, done at that point, basically. So we're just ba making sure that's already programmed in. Okay, so center the view up. Parking brake off. Full throttle. Small amount of right rudder or right steering to keep on the centre line. Coming up through 100 knots. Pull back. This thing's incredibly powerful. Okay, flaps up. So I'm just going to trim it slightly. Pull the throttle back. And autopilot on. Going for heading mode, and we're going to see if this is going to behave itself. Climbing at a thousand feet a minute towards two thousand feet. We haven't actually armed. We now have armed. If you do this on the ground, it doesn't arm it for some reason. Leave it going like that. So it's coming up towards 2,000 feet. Let's see if it levels out. Okay, so the thing we can see, we've now picked up this signal. And we're edging towards the right direction. And you can see that because we're here. Look, because we're quite a long way away, you can see this, this needle is almost in the middle. So we're going to use the heading to change our direction. Just as a kind of a nice way to do it. So we're going to make the aircraft turn round. To fly, whoops. Fly the same direction. It'd be nice if we're not exactly on the needle, because then I can show you the difference of what happens. So we're, we've moved the heading round. Remember we're in heading mode on the autopilot. So we've moved the heading round to be the same direction that we want to be going. But obviously we're slightly to the left of the track see that on the map here. In fact, obviously I've not drawn this very accurately or the magnetic compass isn't quite right, but this is saying that based on the angles, let's just check those angles. This was supposed to be the 349 degree line, or 348, 349. It's good enough. So what we could do to get this to centre up all we need to do is switch the autopilot into nav mode. Now because this is in VLOC mode on the nav instrument and we're in nav mode here, it will work. Should we just have a check of that message? It's got a message sign. It's just warning us that we've got no flight plan program basically. So if we press nav, you will see the aeroplane will turn right to get to centre this up automatically for us. So this isn't going to take very long at all, this flight. We're zooming along quite quickly. So this is going to snake right and then left again, just to centre that line up. It's interesting that it has got such a different line than a little nav map. But it's in the ballpark, that's the important thing. Okay. So, now all we need to worry about is this one. So this is flying along the line towards the Daventry VOR, which is tuned in up here, 116.4. While that's happening, NAV2 is tuned in to 11375, which was Bovingdon. Now at the moment it's saying we are to the left of the line. So if you think in terms of this line away from Bovingdon, we are to the left of it. Does that make sense? So when we get closer to it, we will suddenly see that line sweep in. I'm just going to check those angles. Three, four, f four, five-ish. It's very odd that that's got such a different angle. Anyway, I'm not going to keep going on about it. 
and you can see the distance measuring equipment here look we can actually ch change this between nav 1 and nav 2 so th this is obviously going to count down and the sim I think is is it pausing? no it isn't it's behaving you can see the um, the miles are counting down towards the Bovingdon sorry Daventry uh, VOR but we're not going to actually get there we can figure out where the cutoff point should be if we do a measure on the map here when we get to 19 miles away we should be crossing that Bovingdon line yeah so we're just waiting for this to count down and we can waste some time having a look around along the way so we're over the home counties of the UK this is where the The Battle of Britain raged in the, the 1940s, which is why this scenery looks probably familiar to anybody that's watched any war movies of rolling green hills. Everywhere from here south was all airfields and fighter squadrons, basically. There were far more along the coast, obviously, but yeah, interesting. That's why you see so many of these old airfields dotted across the UK. OK, so is this sweeping in yet? Are we about to cross the 297 degree line? I mean, again, when you're flying by um, navigation radios, it's not an exact science, but you can figure out, you know, in, you can put yourself in the ballpark of where you want to be in the sky. So if you think about it, we are going to turn towards 297. And here it comes. And look, this is coming down towards that 19 mile mark. It's going to be a bit more than 19 miles away, I think, when we cross it. But So we can get ready if we switch back to heading mode. If we just centre this up on the actual direction we're going, we'll switch this back to heading mode. And we'll just fly sort of 295, 297-ish by hand, and we'll try to stay on the needle by navigating. And while we're doing that, we'll tune Nav 1 back over to um, to the ILS for Oxford. Okay, so it's coming down, look, it is going to be about 19 miles, isn't it, by the time we cross over it, but obviously we're going to try not to cross completely over it. So we are now going to turn then to about 295 degrees now. So we're in heading mode, remember. So we will then be flying directly along that radial, so the needle will stop moving, because we're basically lining ourselves up with it. Let's go a couple of degrees off to one side. So if we have a look on little nav map to see what we've done, We've flown up to it, we've approached that radial from Bovingdon, and now we're flying along the radial. The wind is from our left at five knots, so it's pushing us gently across, so we need to turn into it slightly. So let's do that on the compass. We will turn a couple of degrees across the wind, just to counter it, which will hopefully stop us from drifting further right which as you can see is going on here. OK. So now that's going on, we can retune Nav 1 to be the runway at Kidlington. So we want 10835 and 191 degrees on the Omni Bearing Selector. 10835. So we click in here. 10835. And we transfer it to become the frequency we want and you can see it's picked it up already and we want 191 degrees on the omni bearing selector so on the omni bearing selector we will spin this almost completely around 
while we're flying along. And again, it will be the same trick. You will see the needle on the ILS sweep in as we approach the ILS. So there's 210 degrees, 200, and 191 is about there. So you can see we'll have to make a left turn. The interesting thing is, look, we can figure out from the distance measuring equipment how far away from Bovingdon. So if we say we're expecting it at 32 or 30 miles away from Bovingdon. So if we change the distance measuring equipment to show nav 2, you can see it's climbing up 24 miles, so another 6 miles or 5.5 miles to go until we are anticipating we will cross the ILS beam for Kiddlington. So we just sit and wait basically, wait for the beam to cross. And we'll be sufficiently far out, we'll have lots and lots of time then to just fly the ILS in. So four miles. Remember we're still on heading mode so we can actually swing the plane round just by moving the heading marker to match the, the direction of the runway. Three miles to go until the crossing point on the map. So I'll start it turning at about two miles, I guess. So at 28 miles is coming up towards. So when it gets to 28, we'll start turning. I guess we could do it one mile before, couldn't we? It should, it should be fine. Even if we cross over, it isn't a problem, because we've got enough lead on the way in to correct. You can see the, um, the glide slope is there as well. We're slightly below it. So one and a half miles to go to 30 miles. We're expecting this to cross over at about the 30 mile mark. So let's start moving this round. We'll see if we've got our sums right. for 30 miles. Looks like I've underestimated it a little bit. Now here comes the needle. So I think we're going, we are going to be early so we'll steer slightly to one side just to straighten it up. And now we should find if we look up there's Oxford right in front of us. Okay so we're going to cut the throttle, come off the autopilot follow the needles in. So we're looking at the localizer and the glide slope now and we're cutting the engine back on the way. Just going to slowly follow the instruments into Oxford. So we're now the speed is reduced significantly enough that we can drop the flaps. So we've got first stage of flaps. I mean, we could leave the autopilot on and use approach mode, but I tend to like landing myself because it keeps you in practice. If you always land on fully automatic, you get found out eventually because you you lose the skills of being able to actually fly an aeroplane. So typically as soon as I have airfield in sight I will go manual every time. It's very rare that I'll even, you know, even, even in Cat 3 conditions, it's quite rare that I will let the, um, the systems take me in. Not to say I won't ever do it, but typically I like to land it myself. Okay, should we 
zoom out slightly so we get a nicer view of the surrounding area. So we're going for the next stage of flaps. turbulence over the trees. Being thrown around quite a lot actually. There's no need to go for full flaps to land this because it's a big long runway, we can come in quite fast and it won't hurt. And the turbulence has vanished, obviously now we're over the nice smooth airfield. And we're down. No drama. Hurrah! <laughs> okay, flaps up. Just rolling along the t exit taxiway at Oxford is right at the far end of the runway. So there's no point screeching to a halt or using any of the, the short field capabilities of the caravan. So we're just going for the wheel brakes now. We're going to find somewhere to park out on the end here. Okay, wheel brakes on. The easiest way to cut the engine is to pull the fuel, which we've just done. Feather the propeller. Lights can come back off. Fuel boost can go back to off. Avionics can go to off. And battery can go to off. And we can close the fuel valves and we're done. Okay so that was a quick flight in the caravan from Booker Airfield over to Oxford so if we have a look you can see that we had a bit of a discrepancy with the radial into Daventry but other than that it pretty much went as we expected. We played games with doing distance measurements and flying radials from VORs that were not near us yeah, so we were using kind of our head to figure out the picture of where we needed to be and watching the, the needles. And it was actually pretty straightforward, wasn't it? We anticipated the turn there and did it a little bit early. But otherwise, that's just knowing your aeroplane. And I, obviously I don't fly the aeroplanes in flight sim enough to really know their turning radiuses. Um, but otherwise, yeah, it was it was pretty straightforward stuff. So hopefully you found that interesting and I'll see you again soon.